But then they look at themselves and they go, well, I'm still not 100% happy. I must be doing something wrong. But that's not true at all. If your goal is to lose weight, then just lose the weight. If your goal is to lose fat, that comes with a whole different amount of problems, I suppose. Time Miller, bought a hole here. Thank you as always for joining me. I do want to quickly say thank you very much to all the very nice people that said very nice things about the fact that I've teamed up with more plates, more dates. Derek, Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, all of that kind of stuff. Again, if you want to buy some of their supplements, I now have a discount code. It's Simon. There's a link in the description below. Give it a click if you would like to do that. But genuinely, you're just lovely, lovely people. I love you with all my heart. And if I ever meet you in person, I will buy you your beverage of choice. What we're going to do today, though, is we're going to talk about losing fat. We're going to talk about losing weight because way back when, when I decided to dedicate this channel to fitness, I did a video called 10 things nobody tells you about building muscle. It's a very, very YouTube type of a title. And somebody over Instagram, salute to that guy, said, Simon, you should do a bunch of these, but focusing on different areas of fitness. And I was like, I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't. So I thought, hey, man, the two things most people want to do are build muscle. We've done it and they want to lose fat. Let's go. So number 10 is that it takes forever. I said this on the other video as well, but I really like to hammer it down, especially because I understand how audience retention works, right? So many people watch for about three minutes. They go, man, I've got to do something else because my eyes need a different source of entertainment. But always remember that no matter what you are trying to achieve, no matter what your goals are, unless you are some kind of superhuman and you may do and know that if you are, I hate you, it is going to take a long time. Don't do something for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, three months and go, oh, it's not working. You have to give this some time. Now, sure, if you're trying trying to lose fat and your diet is 100% on point and you've got a personal trainer and you're not shifting anything, then maybe you need to go back to the drawing board and try and figure out what you're doing wrong. But this is going to be the exception to the rule. If you have got every single thing going right, you're only going to drop a little bit of weight. Some people say the optimum amount of weight to drop so you don't go crazy down the line is one to two pounds a week. One to two pounds a week. Now, sometimes you're going to drop a little bit more and sometimes you're going to drop a little bit less. And really, there is no magic figure because we don't know what your body's going to do. But it's not a case of Monday you start your new diet and your new fitness plan. Say it's the 1st of January. And then by the 14th of February, oh, Valentine's Day, go out for a meal and give somebody a kiss that you are going to be in your perfect shape. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Even if you did a bunch of drugs. That's the other thing. People think, oh, I'm going to start my cycle here as well. It's not going to work. That's not how this stuff goes down. It just isn't. You have to be dedicated. You have to be motivated. And understand that in this scenario, you are the tortoise. You are not the hare, you are the turtle, the toy toys. You gotta go really slow. Number nine tying into that one is that you are not going to look how you think you're going to look. And this is Instagram, right? And social media and all these problems. When everybody does start one of these new plans, especially when it comes to losing weight, they have an idea of what they're going to look like. Anybody can kind of come up with an image in their head of what you will look like when you lose weight because whatever fat you have got is going to go. But what I kind of find most people done, and maybe this kind of ties more into getting ripped and getting jacked, but still, is they do start losing the body weight, but then they look at themselves and they go, well, I'm still not 100% happy. I must be doing something wrong. But that's not true at all. If your goal is to lose weight, then just lose the weight. If your goal is to lose fat, that comes with a whole different amount of problems, I suppose, and a different amount of rules that you have to go into it. Because of course, if you just want to lose weight, go into a calorie deficit and do a bunch of cardio and you'll get there. But if you do that and you want to try and maintain muscle mass as well, well, then you're going to be skirting around the fact that maybe you're going to drop some muscle because of course you are. Muscles need to be fed, blah, blah, blah. But this is the thing. Do not have this one-stop shop in your head about how you're going to look, I don't know, 12 weeks, 16, 18, 24 weeks, whatever the hell it is, down the line. Because you're not going to be happy and you're only going to disappoint yourself. And there's nothing worse than setting your own expectations that you didn't need to set and then throwing them all on the floor. Just keep it nice and simple, right? Let's say you weigh 15 stone. First of all, you just want to get down to 14 stone. That's it. That's all you're going to try and do. You've accepted it's going to take a long time. And then when you get to 14 stone on the scales, have a look at yourself. Make sure you take before and after pictures. You can start comparing them. And then you will get a more realistic sense of what you'll be when you're 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, whatever the hell you want to drop. I mean, probably don't drop down to 8. That sounds absolutely terrifying and probably dangerous for your health. But that's what you need to do. You need to compare yourself to yourself and nothing else matters. And number eight, again to tie into the last one, is that it will not make you happy. It will make you happier, but it will not make you happy. Now, I understand this is a stupid point because some people go, oh, money won't make you happy, but you still want money. Of course you do because it's going to make an area of your life so much easier than it would be anyway or either way. And that's the same for losing weight. Like most people, I'm going to guess who are obese. I think I said this on a video the other day. If somebody waved in Harry Potter like, oh, it's me, Harry Potter. No, watch Harry Potter. I don't know how he talks. Probably not like that, like Kermit the Frog. And he's going to wave a magic wand. You would take it because the hard thing about 
about not being a beast is losing is losing all of the weight. But with that said, even when you get down to your quote unquote dream physique, it doesn't mean all of a sudden all your other problems aren't still there. And again, it's not a one stop shop for happiness. And I think this is the other thing that people do. They think, okay, well, I'm not very well happy again with my life. So what I'll do is I will get in shape. Great thing to do. There's nothing wrong with using a negative thing to spin it into a positive thing. Spite has always been sort of, you know, used as like when you break up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you think I'm going to show you I'll get in the best shape ever. So you can use spite as a motivator, but it cannot be the be all and end all. And you never see this on fitness commercials or fitness supplement ads because they want you to spend all of their money and convince that this is the magic pill that's going to take you into dream town. And it's just not. There is no such thing as dream town apart from when you go to sleep and you actually have a dream about a town. That is dream town, but you've made that up in your own head. So keep it I suppose, within moderation and keep it balanced. It's absolutely a great thing to do. It is going to improve your life, but it is not all of a sudden going to turn you into, I was going to say Brad Pitt, but Brad Pitt has problems too. Trust me, Brad Pitt has problems. It sounds like I know Brad Pitt. I don't. Number seven is that cardio is not the answer. Now, should you be doing cardio? Of course you should. Cardiovascular exercise, no matter what your current goals are, are is a great thing to do because it's going to improve your health. And as I always say, health and fitness, the most important part of that is health. But what most people do is they still eat the bad food and they just put cardio in there. Now, this is going to work for a little while because, of course, you've gone from burning zero calories on your diet to burning some calories, depending on what your cardio is. But there's a reason the phrase you can't outwork a bad diet is always hanging around, and that's because nutrition is so important. Now, to be fair to fitness companies, they will more over say that you should be doing cardio, but you should be taking their supplements, which is also kind of a bit of a crock, but they're not saying, you know, that cardio is the be all and end all. They want to tie this other stuff in as well, but it's not. And that's the key. You do need to probably put cardio cardio in there unless you're going to be super super on point with your diet but who is right everybody falls off the wagon here and there when it comes to cardio it's going to help but do not think that it means just because you've started doing even an hour on the treadmill or the elliptical or the step or whatever the hell it would be that you can now eat cheeseburgers and pizza because you just can't and then all you're going to do is upset your progress and upset everything that you are trying to achieve everything has to work with synergy in everything else right it's like when people go what's more important training or, or what you're eating everything because if you're not eating right it's not going to benefit the gym and if you're not training right? That's not going to benefit what you're eating. I and mean, if you really, really want to push for it, I'd say that diet is always more important. It just is. You can kind of half ass it in the gym and get a kind of decent body if your diet is 100% on point. But that's not what we're going for here. We are going for what is optimum. So always remember, yes, you've got to include cardio, but diet, I know nobody wants to eat this kind of a stuff, but there are ways and means to make it more fun. We've talked about it a thousand times before. And speaking of food, number six is about cheese meals. Yes, they are important, but be careful. Because having one meal in the middle of a two-week dedication spat is not all of a sudden going to knock you off point like it's just not the best phrase i've ever heard about this is don't worry about what you're going to eat on christmas or thanksgiving worry about what you're going to eat between those events so christmas to christmas or thanksgiving or thanksgiving because once again it's about moderation balance blah 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 however what most people do when they have a cheat meal is they go crazy and they will consume like 5,000, 6,000 calories and it has a knock-on effect like all of a sudden your brain wakes up and it's like oh my gosh that cookie was delicious give me more cookies and you turn into the cookie monster if you're going to have a cheat meal keep it as simple as you possibly can and say Saturday night, you're going to eat whatever you want. But that doesn't mean 72 pizzas. I blame this on The Rock and people like that who go, oh man, I have crazy cheat meals. And people think, oh, I'm going to have crazy cheat meals. You ain't The Rock, brah. And if you are, hey, Dwayne, how are you doing? But you don't know what The Rock is doing in the life. You don't know how his body works, so on and so forth. You have to see what you can do. But so many people are struggling to lose weight and it's because their cheat meals are just way too big and they're having them too frequently. Sometimes you may have to drop them out entirely if you're trying to get super duper lean, but we'll talk about that in just one second. And also do not forget that you get a dopamine release before you you eat junk food. I don't know why your brain just goes, oh my gosh, I want it. And that's why you get so excited to do it. Don't get thrown off by that either, right? Do not get thrown off by that. It's just a, a thing. It's a feeling. And it's why some people say you crave chocolate all the time. It's why you actually lose that craving for chocolate because your body forgets that it associates dopamine with putting it in your mouth. So all of a sudden you don't want chocolate anymore. Sometimes it's not even about the taste. However, I want to make sure we go on the other side as well. Cheat meals, as far as I'm concerned, are important because not only does it give you a reward, again, treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. But it will, if you're on a third Thursday, you're like, oh man, I desperately just want to eat this cheese. You're probably going to hold off eating the cheese until Saturday because you know you've booked it in. It's like a meeting with Dave and accounts. If you know you're meeting with Dave and accounts on a Wednesday, are you going to bring up the points you want to have with him on Tuesday? Nope. You're going to wait till Wednesday. Number five is that it's really hard work. No one ever tells you that, especially when it comes to the fitness industry. They want to pretend that, you know, if you buy all this and pay for all these programs, we'll get you there in 72 seconds. No, it's hard. It's really hard. If it wasn't hard, we'd all be walking around looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, kind of look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, he had amazing genetics, but you take my point. So if it feels hard and you feel like you're struggling, it's because it's hard 
and you are going to struggle. Now, you'll come out the other side of this and you'll find a routine and you'll find a way to make it sustainable and you'll find a way to make it a lifestyle and then you'll just live in the absolute dream town. But that takes time. Again, it takes time. So it is hard. Except that, like, if you were going to do a math quiz, you'd accept that it was hard. Do the same for losing weight. Number four is that, yes, you may get excess skin. Now, this is going to depend on you and it's going to depend on how big you are and it's going to depend on how much weight you lose. But there are plenty of examples out there of people who that just have excess skin. And sadly, this is just one of those life things that you have to accept. Again, once, you know, companies won't tell you this because they don't want you to be worried about it, as you would be. You know, we all have hang-ups and things that we worry about when it comes to our aesthetic and our look. I, I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. It's just one of those things. If you get super-duper fat and then you lose all that weight, you deserve to pat yourself on the back because you've done a great job. But you may have excess skin. Now, I think you can take this care of if you go to a plastic surgeon or something like that, a, com- a cosmetic place. Are you going to have the money? I don't know. But ultimately, you just have to weigh up what's going to make you feel more comfortable. Like I've seen dudes with uh, with excess skin and girls and do I think anything of it? No, if anything, it's almost like a, a war wound. I'm like, oh wow, you've put yourself through it and this is what you've got to show for it, but I totally understand it. But I think you should be made aware. Will you have excess skin? Potentially. Number three is that if you're going to get into the super dieting realm, it is going to flub you right up. Seriously, I did a bodybuilding competition and if only I had known about this. I mean, a lot of it's on my shoulders. I probably should have done some research. But if you are getting into suboptimal levels of body fat, prepare for an absolute roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> in a glass case of emotion talking about emotions you are going to be all over the place you're going to be happy you're going to be sad one day you're going to be crying and you don't know why downstairs if you're a man i can't speak for the women's side of it for obvious reasons but that ain't going to work for a while your sex drive is going to be completely dead and you're just not going to feel right and the reason you're not going to feel right is because your brain will be screaming at you what are you doing this is a normal would you please put some food in your mouth now this isn't going to happen to everyone because i'm sure a lot of you are just trying to be healthy which is dropping a bit of body fat percentage here and dropping a bit of weight there but you may get the bug for it and you may decide oh man i want to get below 10 percent or whatever the hell it may be and usually we're talking about sort of like six percent and below but you never know you never know what your body's going to do but it is hell and it is horrible and it's not sustainable going back to sustainability no one apart from a very select few people are able to walk around like that all of the time because you aren't healthy my trainer called it controlled starvation controlled starvation. I mean, what's next? What did you do to that guy? Oh, well, I controlled murdered him. Well, that's okay. No, it's not. Number two is that you can't blame your metabolism. We've done a video about this as well, and there is science out there to back it up, even though you're not going to agree and you're going to get mad in the comments, but go nuts, man. It's for the algorithm. That's all I care about. Whatever your metabolism is, is what your metabolism is. It's like the fact that I went bald. Did I want to go bald? No, but that's what Mother Nature did. And it's the same to your metabolism. That's not to say there's not things you can do to speed it up a little bit, but we're talking a little bit here. You cannot blame all your problems on your metabolism. Again, fitness companies will tell you this because they say, but luckily we've got this magical pill that you can take and that will give you the best metabolism ever. It's not going to work. It's just not. And the more time you spend blaming your metabolism, the less time you're spending actually focusing on the problem. You're like Deontay Wilder, to use a topical reference from this week, which won't work in about 10 days, but who cares? He has spent the last 18 months going, oh, Tyson Fury wrapped his fist. Oh, my trainer threw the towel and oh, my costume was too heavy. And now, and look, I could be completely wrong. Who the hell knows? He's probably going to get knocked out again by Tyson Tyson Fury because he hasn't been focusing on his mistakes, which is why he lost the, pl- uh, the fight to begin with. And if you start doing this with your metabolism, you are going to get the same results. Let's say that you think I'm wrong. Okay, don't still don't waste time on your metabolism. Figure out how to use that metabolism in order to lose weight because everybody can lose weight. It's a lot harder for some people than it is others because once again, you may have pulled the bad card in the deck, but metabolism is too easy of an excuse. And number one is that it can be enjoyable. Now, I know this kind of counteracts some of the things that we've gone through, but it absolutely can be, and there's ways that you can make it enjoyable. It doesn't mean it's going to be entertaining 100% of the time, but let's say you do drop from 14 to 13 stone. Why don't you plan to reward yourself when you hit 13? Whether you go to the cinema or you have some food you like or you go on some kind of adventure that you wanted to do for a while. Then all of a sudden, you're like a dog, right? You're like a dog. You are rewarding yourself and you are ensuring that you continue to be motivated for whatever the next goal is. And it's the same with everything. Some days are going to be good and some days are going to be bad. That's just how the human brain works. But it doesn't mean you can't build in fail safes almost in to ensure that it feels like a cool adventure and it feels like a cool journey. That's why Everybody uses that term, oh, come on, me come on my fitness journey, because it's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. But you can control some of these. Don't go into it going, oh, this is going to be the hardest thing ever. I mean, be aware that it's hard, but don't over-egg it, right? Don't go all hyperbole with it because it's not going to help you. It just isn't 
Figure out how to make it fun, right? That's what life should be about. Going to the gym should be fun. Uh, whatever you do in your life should be fun. Life should be about fun. So when, you come, when something is coming at you, that you think, oh man, this isn't going to be the funnest thing in the world. Well, what can you do to make it fun? For example, when I want to lose weight, I do exactly that. I go, okay, well, I'm 16 stone right now. And when I get down to 15, five, I'm going to have a pizza, right? And so it means I really, really focus on losing that half a stone so that when I get there, I know I'm going to have a pizza. Now, look, I'm obsessed with pizza. So this works for me, but you can find your own one too. Maybe it's some marshmallows. Maybe it's a strawberry. Maybe you just take your head and you dunk it into a vat of chocolate. So there you go. 10 things about losing weight and losing fat that nobody tells you. Hopefully it helps you a little bit. Hopefully it keeps you motivated. And hopefully it keeps you on track. I just know in my own life, if somebody had said this to me when I was in my, well, difficult parts of my fitness journey, it just would have helped just to, even if I knew this stuff, to have somebody back it up. So hopefully it helped. If it didn't, you've watched this far, so I appreciate it. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding. So you know other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen. Give it a click now and see what's going on. Again, already talked about the more plates, more date stuff. I really like Gorilla Mode slash Gorilla Mind. I would, the reason I'm involved is because they asked me, but also because I believe in it. Otherwise, I would have said no. That would have been a waste of time. Use code Simon to get 10% off, and there's a link in the description below. Also on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. Come give me a follow and come have a chat, should you so wish. Simon.bigcartel.com for merchandise, patreon.com for says Simon316. 316 if you want to support the channel that way talking about diets i'm in greg Doucette's power 13 cookbook that cookbook is designed to give you fit meals you can eat that are healthy again all the information down there otherwise have a good day also on cameo i forgot about that oh happy birthday whatever the hell you want you take care good luck on your fitness journey and i will see you soon